Okay, we're back once again. This is Rad Gen HTO uh, with my SID cell. I've done a little bit more work uh, since the last time we spoke. Let me go ahead and show you what we got going on here. Uh, I've gone ahead and shortened my feed tube going back to my bubbler to give me more of a direct flow to that. And coming out of my bottom of my reservoir bubbler, I've installed a little pump. Now, I don't know if you can see it. It's just a little bitty pump I picked up off of eBay. Uh, seven liters per minute draws like a third of an amp real small pump I don't know how long it's gonna hold up uh, the electrolyte probably will eat the impeller up who knows we'll see and then I've gone, gone ahead and uh, straightened my wiring out a little bit shortened up this uh, negative lead and uh, that's pretty much it and then put a nice wiring in for the pump so that it comes on when the uh, cell comes on itself off my solenoid here. Now I have changed my electrolyte solution too. I was at three quarters of a teaspoon in a gallon of water. I've gone down to half a teaspoon in a gallon of water. I wanted to try to get my amps under control a little bit better. Uh, I know this is going to reduce my production but uh, so be it. I just want to go ahead and play with that mixture for a while and see what it gets me. Sorry about that. We're back. Okay we're at 11.89 volts coming straight off my battery without the engine running and at 34.9 amps. All right, as you can see, uh, we've got the fluid and the electrolyte pumping through. Uh, once again, I said we've got the pump running, so that's helping to show that flow there. So that's not a true indication of the flow. But uh, over here, where I'm gonna do a little test for you. That's my bubbles coming out. And you can see there's pretty massive bubbles there. Uh, give me one second, let me get it set up over here. I'll come back to you in a minute, and we'll do a little time test on it. Okay, I'm back. Okay, now I'm going to hook this tube up and it's going to start the gas flow to my uh, HHO-ometer over here that I've rigged up. Uh, this isn't very pretty, but I hope you can excuse me on it. And then we'll, i got a stopwatch hooked up here and hopefully we can uh, get a time and get the everything all in the same picture. Alright, so here we go. I'm going to run this to my tank. Gas is going to start flowing. Here we go. Alright. Alright, so that was at uh, 30 seconds was one liter. Alright, now that's with the reduction in the electrolyte. So hopefully uh, if I go back up into my amperage again, we get back up to where we were. Uh, so that's two liters per minute at uh, 35 amps and 11.79 volts. Now when I go ahead and crank this engine up, uh, this is going to jump up to about 13 and a half volts and this is probably going to go around 45. So we'll time it one more time and see what it does when I do that. Okay, I'm back now with the engine running. 12.8687 uh, volts, uh, 55.9 amps, uh, just to show you my production and outflow. Things pumping pretty good. Bubbling. I don't have a full reservoir right now. I'm, I'm playing with my electrolytes. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and hook this tube up one more time. And hit my stopwatch. And we're off. Okay, bubbles coming out at 18 seconds. 18 seconds for one liter. Okay, I'm back once again. I'm um, at 12.89 volts at 54.1 amps. I've gone ahead and uh, raised my electrolyte level. Uh, this will show you my outflow. Uh, I just want to go ahead and reduce the space there at the top of my reservoir to avoid any uh, problems I might have with this uh, tank expanding a little bit before it starts pumping out gas. 
Okay, we're all set up over here. We're ready to go. Gonna hook up my tube, hit my timer, and we're off and running. Uh, 18 seconds again for bubbles to come out the bottom, so that's holding pretty separate. I'll calculate that out and we'll get back to you. It's steady right now with this uh, with this amperage, so uh, I think that's where we're going to be at. We're going to be at just a little bit over three liters per minute right now at that amp. Okay, we got a little uh, footnote here. Uh, as far as my production goes, I went ahead and uh, printed it up here so we can discuss it. Uh, my final production was at 12.86 uh, volts at 55.9 amps, uh, producing 118.874 watts. Uh, we produced 1,000 milliliters in 18 seconds, which gives us 3.33 liters per minute for an MMW of 4.637. Now, I've uh, made my own gaskets for this cell. It's not the ones that they produce with the cell and sell with it. Uh, I was waiting for mine and I got a little impatient so I went ahead and produced my own out of shower pan gasket which is at uh, four mils thick. Now right next to it here are the actual gaskets that uh, the producers of these cells uh, make for them. They're one sixteenth of an inch thick. You'll notice here if I go down the side you got about a half inch of difference between the two stacks of gaskets. That's the exact same number of gaskets in each stack and there's about a half inch difference. So after talking today to uh, Sid Young and uh, Zero Fossil Fuel via email, uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and swap out these gaskets and see if I can't get my amperage under a little bit better control and raise my MMW and see if I can't get up to uh, a better producing number at a lower amperage. So any next videos that we should get, get after these today are going to be with the new gaskets installed. Okay, one final note I wanted to go ahead and make here. I wanted to go ahead and zoom in if I could here on the uh, the connectors here on this cell. Okay, you know, I really like this cell. The only problem is when you get into a higher gauge wire with these push-on terminals, uh, it's hard to find the push-on terminals, number one. And then if you go ahead and take a smaller terminal and solder it on, you still have the problem with uh, there's heat buildup here at the point of contact once you start running uh, higher amperages through it. Uh, so the only way to avoid that is to go ahead and solder it to the actual plate itself. Now if this design had been changed just a little bit and you went ahead and extended the corner of the plate up so it came to a square here and then had a hole drilled into it to where you could go ahead and mount a ring terminal ring terminals are available all the way to like double lot zeros or something like that so uh, it's easy to get a ring terminal where you can or it's hard to get push on terminals and higher get amperages or higher gauge wires uh, just a little footnote little thoughts I wanted to share with uh, whoever watches this video and whoever designs these uh, have a good day I'm out